What's going on everyone? Platinum B is coming at you with yet another video. Today we're going to be looking at the historical spot price chart for gold, silver, and platinum. And we're going to discuss what a potential market crash could look like. As we all know, many times throughout history, history ends up repeating itself. So I thought this would be an interesting topic to cover today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, so as you can see, I've got the spot prices pulled up here, the historical spot price charts from Provident Precious Metals, but you can use any chart you'd like to do the same thing. But today we're going to be taking a look at the historical spot price chart to see and get a rough idea or kind of guess slash speculate on what could potentially happen if the market were to crash yet again. So as we all know, history, many times throughout history, history ends up repeating itself. I, I mentioned that in the beginning of the video, and it holds true, right? That is some of the wisest advice you can ever give someone or you can ever receive as a person, yet it still continues to happen day in and day out. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happened back during the 2008 crash or recession or whatever you'd like to call it, and see if we can maybe guess at potentially the same thing occurring again right obviously we know the 2008 market crash had a lot to do with the housing market and the banks and all that mumbo jumbo so things are different right this is not a tick for tack exact same scenario exact same history repeating itself however markets do crash recess pull back whatever you want to call it throughout history it is just it just happens and it's unavoidable, right? Markets don't just go up forever, no matter what people online want to tell you. So, as you can see here, we're going to start in gold. We're going to go take looks at silver and platinum as well. Palladium's on a little bit of different ball game because its chart looks completely different than the other metals, and it's a more newer metal to the investment field. So, I'm just going to stick to gold, silver, and platinum. But, if we take a look here, let's go mid-2008, shall we? So right here, June 2008, gold was at 892.94. And just a few months before that, it was at 935.63. So right around 2008, it was at all-time high levels, right? We can see all the way back to 1990 on this chart that gold was sitting at all-time high levels in 2008. So even during the recession, even during the crash, gold still did not go below its it's all time, I guess, lows, so to speak. I guess it was used as actual currency at one point, so it was only worth what was printed on it. <laughs> Funny enough. But it, this still holds true. So let's say that the market does crash. We do go into a recession or a pullback or what have you, and you have precious metals in your portfolio. Well, chances are they won't go as low as some other investments you might have, right? Back in 2008, the housing market got hit real bad. People couldn't give away their houses, basically. And so that one st st stuck mostly to the housing market, right? If you owned a house, that was the worst asset to have in your investment portfolio. However, the housing market crash caused all the other markets to come back as well, right? Because if you owned a bunch of houses, but you also had stocks, you had to pay the bank for those houses or just claim bankruptcy. But even through bankruptcy, you still have to liquidate your assets, which if you have stocks, if you have precious metals, if you have whatever, you have to liquidate those to cover as much as you possibly can, even like in a bankruptcy or what have you. They don't just let you keep everything and just turn over your keys to the bank and say it's your problem now. <laughs> so, but this is an interesting point because it looks like gold stuck around its all-time high. It looks like the beginning of 2008, it reached all-time high. And by the time we went to mid-2008, it was at 892. Now, if we go down to December 2008, still 855. And it really didn't go that low. Let's see, the lowest point right here, 738. Still really, really high compared to, say, 2006. That's double almost. It's almost double what it was a couple years prior. So it didn't get hit as bad as many other assets and commodities did. Why is that? Well, 
one thing we can kind of note is many of the big boys, and what do I mean by big boys? The billionaires, right? Many of the billionaires, if they stack precious metals in their portfolios, typically they hold to about 5% of their overall portfolio. That's a very conservative rate. That's, that's a very fallback, safe haven thinking when stacking. And they don't stack like us. They don't collect pieces and stuff like that. They just simply put it in either the paper market or they put it in physical bullion. But typically it's just in the form of one type of bullion or what have you. However, they do hold those assets and those typically be end up being the strongest. So if the whole world ends, they have 5% of their holdings in, in, in gold. Typically it's gold. Sometimes it's silver and platinum, but typically it's gold. Then if the whole world ends and, and their company or assets or stocks or whatever is all of a sudden worthless, they at least have, they at least get to hold on to 5% of what they once were a billionaire. And so that's still millions of dollars and what have you. But we can see here that gold held the strongest. The same thing happened in March of 2020 when the stock market crashed. We can see here March 2020, gold stuck around. So it looks like it got down. Well, it looks like it got down to about 1500. But then it, <laughs> a few months later, ended up at over $2,000. So, what we can see here is in 2008, gold was the best asset to have because it got hit the least, if really at all. And so this was during the time when the market was bad. Then the market starts to get better in 2011, 2010, 2011, a few years past the recession, things start getting better. Housing market comes back a little bit. It didn't go get, it didn't, the market didn't really get great again, <laughs> no pun intended, until somewhere around, well, really around this area, right? 2016, 2015, 2017. And you, it's clearly evident by gold's price in this range, right? People were comfortable. People were okay. Everything was great. The economy was booming. It was doing wonderful. And so people weren't buying gold. People weren't investing gold. People didn't want gold because why? They didn't have to worry. People feel this sense of comfortability and they feel they don't need to worry or prepare for things, right? A lot of stackers are preppers. Now, I don't prep for the apocalypse. I don't have uh, crazy storage life food and a bunker out back or nothing like that. But I do stack precious metals sort of in preparation of things that could potentially occur. But as you can see here, the market got better and better and precious metals really got better. But the markets on the other sides of things with stocks and housing didn't fully recoup in this area necessarily, right? 2010, 2011, things were still kind of making their way slowly but surely. 2016, 17, 18, things were blowing and going. So what we can take a look at and see from this chart is if a market crash does occur and a pullback happens or a recession or whatever you want to call it, I think that precious metals may be one of the best assets to own in your portfolio. I'm not saying just go out and just dump all your money into precious metals, but it could prove to be the best thing to have. Now, what I want to say is Let's say it happens this year or next year. I made the video that I released yesterday talking about this to an extent. And that could very well happen. Well, if it does, precious metals will probably show their strongest suit, right? Now, they might go down a little bit. As you can see here, gold's at 1875. It's doing great. But it could go down to $1,600, $1,700, maybe even as low as $1,500, depending but it's not going to go down to crazy low numbers that we saw decades ago. It's going to hold fairly strong. It might go down a little bit, but it won't go down as much as some of the other asset classes that are out there for investment. So basically, guys, what I'm trying to get across in this video is if a market crash occurs, your stack will be secure. And it may even come in handy depending on what your circumstances look like. If you have a lot of debt, if you own a house and you can't make the payment, whatever the case may be, jobs get bad, whatever happens, your precious metals will possibly end up being the best asset you own. 
Now, we're going to take a look at silver, which we know is a more speculative play than gold. And as we can see here, again, all-time high in 2008 when houses were at all-time lows. Or not all-time lows, but fairly recent all-time lows. And yet, silver's at an all-time high. It hit 20 bucks for the first time ever in March of 2008. And then in the mid-2008, again, it was at 1768. Now, it did go down quite a bit to 1032. Now, let's see when it was last at 1032. It looks like last at 1032 around 2006. So again, charts are pretty similar. Even given silver speculative play, the charts are pretty similar. And then once we started coming out of 2008, precious metals went to the moon. Now here's one thing I want to mention and one important fact about both these gold and silver things. A lot of people, especially in silver, during this time bought into the hype. Wall Street silver wasn't a thing, but but man, were people seeing those gains in silver and they were buying, 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 buying. So this is some, sort of a history repeats itself thing as well, right? As you can see here, silver hit basically its all-time high in 2011. And my guess is during this time, people saw how strong it was. It went down for some odd reason later in 2008. But then slowly went up and at this very moment right here when it broke 20 bucks i guarantee people were clamoring over this metal and they went out and bought and bought and bought and bought and drove the price up and up and up and up and up and then it fluctuated a little bit and then it started to go back down 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 and then we get into the comfortability stage where people are comfortable and they end up either just saying well i'm not going to sell for a loss so i'm just going to hold and just wait it out until maybe here or what have you or they ended up selling for a loss and losing their shirt <laughs> but that's just not smart you got to know what you're doing with this stacking of precious metals but that's an interesting point right because i'm not saying that exact same thing is happening here but i will say that there's a lot of hype and hype usually never ends up being what you really want to fall into when making financial decisions you know I'll go ahead and say that is good financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but that is some good financial advice. Never buy into any hype in anything in life, right? Beanie Babies, you know, whatever. So many things throughout history have been hyped, bought up, turned to, into expensive. That's why I really don't get into crypto. But I don't want to go into a tangent. I want to stick to the topic at hand. We're going to take a look at platinum as well. And as we can see here, 2008... Wow, 2008, we actually hit all-time highs. So guys, if you don't have platinum, you might want to get some because if the same thing happens, it will be the king. It will be the king of the market, the absolute king. Now, this could have more to do with something that I'm simply missing. I haven't done that much research into 2008 platinum prices and why they are the way they were. However, if it simply just ends up being the same as history... We could see platinum being king. And what do I mean by king? Being the most valuable of the top three precious metals. Now, palladium is in its own category, and we're not talking about that in this video. But platinum might end up being the best thing you can do. Now, remember this. All-time high, boom. To, it, it just straight tanked, right? Someone bought, someone, someone somewhere bought an ounce of platinum for $2,000 in the next day. It was 800 bucks. Well, a couple months later, maybe. Okay, maybe like four or five months later. But still, four or five months later, and they lost half their investment. Now, let's take a look at that, shall we? At the end of 2008. So that was probably right when the housing market really started to get bad. So it's interesting. Perhaps platinum thrives more in a good economy than a bad economy. Something to consider and something to take note of. However... However, that's not necessarily case in point. Now, let's take a look at 827.70 was the low of November 2008. So let's take a look at when it was last there. 827, right there. It looks like, boom. July 19th, 2004. So there's a bigger gap between the all-time low of 2008 or the low of 2008 to it the past time it was at that level now that is a key difference we can see in platinum and silver and gold silver and gold 
they reached their lows, 2008 lows, back in 2006. Same thing with gold. 2008 low was reached back in 2006. So, again, platinum sometimes moves differently than gold and silver, if that makes sense. Now, let's take a look and see what we have over here in 2020 during the crash for platinum. So it looks like March 2020, platinum went all the way down to 726.82. Now, that was levels that were, have not been seen since... Almost 17 years, almost 17 years, it hit an almost 17 year low. So if you bought in then, you really made a lot of money now. However, what we can also look at is the 2008 low for platinum, right? 2008 low is here and it slowly went up in 2009, went up and up and up. So it did a similar thing to gold and silver during the economy as it was slowly getting better, I suppose. Again, guys, I don't think the economy truly got better until this range right here where it plateaued right below the line for quite a few years, around three or four or five years. But it was one of the first assets to really recover and really shine, right? Just like gold and silver. So if a market crash is to occur, what we can take away from this is precious metals is one of the best assets to have to secure yourself during a crash because it's going to crash the least, most likely. Also, it will be one of the fastest to recover, and it will typically recover higher than any other asset. Now, once we see the market get comfortable again, then we'll see it sort of plateau at a certain number. I believe the number will be higher than the previous term, if that makes sense, because it, we can see here in all the charts, here in the early days, it's low. It goes up, it goes down, it goes way up, and then it plateaus, but it plateaus higher than its last plateau. So let's take, for instance, these lines, right? For the silver chart, it's $40, $30, $20, $10, $10 $0, right? Back here in the 90s, it, it was staying below $10, right? It, it never reached above $10 until about 2006. Now, it, it will never reach below $10 again, most likely, silver. It, it plateaued below $20. So perhaps it plateaus below $30, Interesting, right? That can be tied to inflation or it could just be tied to other things. I like to think it's tied to inflation. Same thing with platinum. It plateaued below 500 bucks an ounce. For a whole decade in the 90s, you could get platinum below $500 an ounce. Here in the mid-teens, it plateaued below $1,000 an ounce. So $1,000 was the average price for platinum in the normal economy or the good economy or what have you. When it plateaus next time, maybe it plateaus below $1,500 an ounce, right? And it stays above $1,000 forever, right? That, that very well could be. Same thing with gold. Below $500 an ounce for a whole decade, went up, went down, yada, yada, plateaued below $1,500 an ounce, and maybe it will plateau below $2,000 an ounce, right? So maybe we'll never see below $1,500 again. Just something to think about, guys. At the end of the day... I just wanted to make this video kind of looking over the spot price charts historically. This was a really long video, so if you made it this far in the video, you are a champ. With all that being said, guys, be sure to leave your comments in the comment section down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And until next time, guys, we will see you.